Is your dream creating a game, but you haven't done it yet? In this course, you will learn the fundamentals of game development. Enroll now in early access to get a huge discount and all future updates for free. In this video, we will be showcasing the marketplace assets that are free for the month. And what better way to showcase them than by creating a little game. Let's start by opening the Unreal Launcher, launching Unreal, and creating our project. And I will call it Mini Game Jam September. Here is my editor, and now we need to start adding the assets here. To get the free assets, we need to go back to the launcher, go to the Marketplace tab, and search for the free for the month. You need to add them if you don't have it already and then open each one and add them to the project. Here's my project, add to project and this will add it. We will do the same thing for all the assets. Some of these assets will take a few minutes to get added, but with the magic of editing we can show the process very quickly. Now for the flexible combat system it's a little bit different because this is not added to the project we need to create another project. So let's create one. Here in the folder, I'm going to be very interested in copying the folder called Flexible Combat System inside the content. Let's just copy it and paste it inside our project. I will find the folder of my project if I go here to Content Drawer, right click the content and show in Explorer. Here I'm already in the content folder, so let's copy it. Not only will I copy this folder, I'm going to also copy the default input. So I'll copy it and paste it inside my project, like this. And I'm going to need to open my project again. So let me close it and open it again. So now that I have all the assets in place, we can start with the game design. I ask through a community post on prompts that I could use for this project. And this is the one that I select. Now, when you're in a game jam, there are a lot of ways of interpreting the prompts. But what I like to do is transform them into mechanics. In this case, parallel universe will mean for me that I will create a type of mechanic like in Mario 64 where you can go through a painting to another world. And light in dark places will have to do a lot with the mechanics that I'm going to add and maybe there could be a combat mechanic where only I can hit enemies that are under a light. For the next part, I do need a goal for the game that I'm going to be creating. Why do I need to go to these parallel worlds? And in my case, I will need to collect items. Whenever I got these key items from all the worlds that I have gone, then the game will be completed. In order to finish a game, your goal needs to be very clear. And this is the first part that we are going to develop. If I were participating in a real game jam, it is very important to develop first the goal of the game because we could have a lot of plans about the levels, about the mechanics, but if the overall goal is not developed, then what I would be presenting is an incomplete game. So by developing first the goal of the game, if I run out of time, then it won't be a problem. Now that I set up the game mode with the correct player, player controller, and the level, we can continue. With my character on the game mode, what I'm going to do is create the mechanic to pick some items up. I do need the item, so I need to create it. Just a sphere collision and a static mesh, and I'm done. Let's make the item a little bit bigger, so it's easier to see. And now we will test it to see if it is working correctly. We will be using this on begin overlap, to know when we are collecting this item, and we can check it out pretty easily by just destroying the actor and see what's happening. 
There may be many pickups later on, so I will create an interface blueprint and call it pickup actions. This will be called pickup key item and I'm going to rename this item to collect to key item. Just so I know that it is a very important item that I need to pick up. Now I only need to call the pickup interface. I want these key items to be unique so I'm going to use the gameplay tags so I can know exactly what I'm picking up. Now I need to save this value inside my key item. Also assign it a default value. I need to send this information to my character so I need to update my interface function. It's time to implement this function so I'll open the character. Now this character will be the one picking up the key item but I want those key items to be stored in the game instance because I'm going to be traveling between levels and whenever a level gets created, the information inside the actors inside the levels are deleted. The only class that survives this is the game instance, which is a persistent class, gets created once and only gets deleted when the game stops. Here we will create a simple validation by using tags, tags container and queries, I can know whenever all these items are collected. We do need to add the values in the instances and also implement the interface in the character. Remember to set up your game instance in the project settings. And that's how we finish the mechanics of finding the key items and checking if we have them all. Now I will create the mechanic to go through the paintings so we can hop between levels. And it's just a matter of creating an actor blueprint and setting up the static mesh and the collision just so we can interact with it whenever we are near it. Also we need to choose a correct size so we can roll through it. Now whenever I'm near this painting and I roll into it, I want to go through it. So it's just a matter of using the collision of our box. So we know when we are overlapping and whenever we are not overlapping it. So we can save a reference to that blueprint. And we need to tell our painting to remove the collision whenever we are going through it. So inside the painting I do need a function to do exactly that. We will get the static mesh component and remove its collision. Then we will call it here. And we need to check whenever we are facing towards our painting. So I'm going to use the dot product to check if we are facing it head on. Now we can go through the painting, but after going through the painting, we need to teleport to another place. We will create an event that will disable the mesh collision, wait a little bit through a delay node, and then open our selected level that I'm going to create as a variable, so we have a lot more control. Now we just need to update the functions and well, I'm just going to create a little bit of a mockup of how the level will be need to be designed in order for us to sell the effect. Now we have it, so the painting takes me to another place. I'm going to duplicate the Scanlabs interiors map and move some stuff around so I can put my paintings in it and it can work as a hub type of map. So what I want to do here is place stuff around, put our pictures that are blueprints and create fake walls so we can go through them. Later on I will add blocking volumes so we are not falling through the map. Also I will mess around with a little bit with the lighting so we are going to remove the current sky and use the marketplace asset for our new and powerful sky. 
Now I'm trying some lighting with a point light and also by changing the color we can give it a little more personality to our environment. And here we have it. It should be working. We do need to fix that little bug where our camera will collide with the picture and we will just detach the camera whenever we are going through a picture. The last step for our map is just adding some instructions and testing that it is working correctly. So I will put use a spacebar to go through the painting and then test that everything that we added is working. Now what I need to do is select the maps that I want to use, duplicate them and put them in the folder of my project, put a key item so we can grab it and then go back here to the hub and assign the correct level to the paintings so we know that we are going to the right level. With the maps organized, we can proceed and select each painting and set up the correct value. Also, it would be a good idea to have a painting to go back to the hub level. And this is something that we will need to do for all of our maps. Now that we can win the game, I'll make a little interface to show exactly that. To do this, I only need to create a text block and a button that will let me quit the game. The quit button should quit and we should call this end screen whenever we know that we have completed the game, which is when we have collected all the key items. Now it's just a matter of testing the game. Now that the game is working, it's only a matter of adding the weapons for our player and the enemies in our levels that they will serve as an obstacle to get our key items and that would be the main challenge of the game. And with that, we are finally done. We have utilized every free marketplace asset of this month to create a very simple game. As you have seen, there are a lot of stuff that you can do with this marketplace asset. Just remember to grab them now that they are free, so you can create cooler stuff with this than what this video can possibly show in just a few minutes. I hope that this was entertaining and I'll see you next time.